Hey everyone in the VC, it's Matt, and uh, checking in with a new video. First off, want to wish everyone a happy new year. Hope you had a good time last night and had a good Christmas season and New Year's uh, even day overall. So uh, just sort of hanging around the house these last couple of days. We had temperatures down into about 19 degrees, and it's been 20-something during the day the last couple of days, and it rained a little yesterday, so the streets were slick and icy, and so basically just hung around the house yesterday and today and nothing special but I hope hope everyone out there had a, a good safe and fun New Year's so wanted to um, it's uh, I wanted to do this a lot quicker and it's been a while but I wanted to do part two of my best albums in 1981 video so uh, did the first one I don't know a week or two ago seems like a couple of weeks ago and I'll try to get to the remainder on the list uh, quicker than I have been but uh, so yeah this I'm gonna do the next five which will be um, I think 20 to 16 so we'll just get right into it uh, these best albums of 1981 in my opinion and I, I pick my top 25 so at number 20 soft cell everyone knows the song tainted love and this has a, a weird album but it's got a, a lot of other songs on there that are uh, didn't get a lot of radio play, but are along the same same lines as that, and uh, it's just sort of a good, bouncy, fun, uh, kind of perverse and weird, but fun album that puts you right smack dab in the 80s sound in a good way, and uh, so Tainted Love and, and the rest of the album is pretty good too. Um, number 19... Miss Jet with I Love Rock and Roll. Um, this is, um, of course, everyone knows that song. Uh, just, uh, you know, one of the American treasures there. Great rock and roll singer. And uh, she has been through the years. And plenty of good songs on here. Really not a bad song on here. Um, it's got The Little Drummer Boy, which is uh, Christmas Just Passed, so that's kind of fitting. Uh, one of my favorite versions of that. Of course, there's a whole lot of people have done versions of that, and a lot of them have been really good, but I always really liked hers. It's kind of kind of weird that there's a Christmas song at the very end of this album, and the rest of the album, it's uh, nothing to do with the holidays, but but it works all the same. I Love Rock and Roll, of course, is a great one. Uh, Bits and Pieces, uh, You're Too Possessive is a really good song that should have been a hit, I think. Um, so... Yeah, just just good gut buck, bucket rock and roll, and uh, it's got got that early '80s sound and and uh, Joan Jett is there at number 19. We go to number uh, 18. Had to sit there and think of what comes after 19 for a minute, and uh, we have uh, "My Life in the Bush of Ghosts" by David Byrne of the Talking Heads and Brian Eno, who was uh, in. Um, was he in Roxy Music and he's made solo albums and produced albums by tons of people. So this is a, this is another strange album. It's kind of an avant-garde, experimental, weird album in a way, but it's also pretty fairly accessible. Uh, it's, it's, it's out there, but, but it's also pretty listenable. Uh, sounds in, in parts like the Talking Heads, uh, obviously because uh, David Byrne connection there doesn't really have any <clears throat> lyrics. It has some, some singing and some, some words, but it doesn't have straightforward lyrics per se. It's mainly music, sort of uh, just, um, like I said, just sort of avant-garde, weird stuff. This is probably an album that some people would like and a lot of people just really wouldn't, wouldn't get into. Uh, kind of in times, at times, it sounds like what would later become uh, sort of electronica and techno music, which is a type of music that I really don't like at all. But uh, this works, and it's good, and it's 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 sort of strange and different. It's not an album that I listen to a whole lot, but it's one that every once in a while uh, get in the mood for it, and just nothing else will do. It's it's a good. It's, it's got a little bit of the sound of Remain in Light, which was the Talking Heads album from 1980, which made my uh, top 25. 1980 uh, list pretty high up there uh, and so yeah it's just uh, some weird strange different um, 
stuff there and worth a listen, worth checking out. Go on to uh, YouTube and check it out if you don't, if you're not familiar with it, to see if it's something you would uh, like or not. It may may not be, but it may may be also. So uh, <clears throat> at number seventeen, uh, here comes Joan Jett again with Bad Reputation. Now the um, this album, if I'm correct, and I might be wrong. There was actually an album that came out in 1980, I think it was just called Joan Jett, and then in 1981, I Love Rock and Roll came out, which I could be wrong again, but I think I Love Rock and Roll is basically just a reissue of the Joan Jett album from the year before, and there might be a few songs different between the two albums, I'm not sure, but I think this is basically the 1980 album, and that's why... I guess she had two albums in 1981 because this was the um, her proper 1981 album. Uh, both of them, I love both these albums, and they're pretty close together as far as, as my uh, love for them. But this one edges out I Love Rock and Roll just a little bit because Bad Reputation and I Love Rock and Roll, even though it was overplayed a little bit probably, but if I had to still love them, love them both, but if I had to choose... Bad Reputation, I uh, think, would be my choice between those two. Um, and there's uh, quite a bit more. The uh, old Dusty Springfield song, You Don't Own Me, that she covers here. Really good, good uh, make-believe. You don't know what you've got. Um, of course, you got Do, Do You Want to Touch Me, which was the other hit from this album. And uh, just uh, really not a bad song on here either. It's just a good, fun just just basic rock and roll and uh, of course she was all over the radio and MTV in those days with both of these albums so good fun stuff and I end with uh, number 16 we'll pick up 15 on down the road in subsequent videos number 16 got Magic Magazine with Magic Murder and the Weather this was their fourth album uh, this is a great band. I'm not going to get too in detail about them now because I might do individual reviews of their albums at some point. But So this is their fourth album. This is a band that uh, the, um, should have been Howard DeVoto. He was in the Buzzcocks, which was one of the great seminal punk rock bands of the early days. He was only in it for a short time, and he left the band to uh, go put magazine together. And they made albums in, I want to say, yes, 78, 79, and 80, and then this one in 81. And then they basically broke up after that, but they came back and did a reunion album about four years ago, which is actually a really good album. Most of the time when bands go away and come back, you know, 20 years later, it's not so great, but there are a few exceptions, and that's one. But this album was generally considered to be the weakest of their first four, and the first three are probably better, or actually they are better, but this is still good. This this really has that uh, early 80, 81, 82 sound to it. Good, catchy music. Uh, it's a shame that this band isn't more known than they are. They really are so good that they should be up there within everyone's record collection that likes rock and roll music, and, um, you know, this especially the first three albums should just be household name albums, but unfortunately they're not. And this album, even though it's not as good as the first three, is still really good in my opinion. Still catchy, still great music, just just good sort of art rock, post-punk, uh, just basic good music. And uh, it's kind of a shame that they came around in 81 and basically broke up, I mean, and uh, I said that backwards, but uh, because they could have been... Had they been around a little longer, maybe MTV back when it was still good, when it first started, would have picked them up, and they'd be a lot better known than they are now. Anyway, uh, not too exciting of a video there, but I just wanted to check in with that. And so that takes us up to number 16, and we still have 15 up to the first and best album of 1981, in my opinion. And I'll try to get to those as soon as possible. Again, hope everyone's having a good New Year's, and we will talk to you later.